my video for New World released over a month after the game came out, two million views. You don't have to do this. You cannot trust mainstream game reviewers. I haven't seen this video before. Okay, right off the bat, I want to be very precise with my definition of what mainstream refers to. When I say the word mainstream, in the title that is, I am not referring to video game reviews that are simply popular. I'm referring to established media outlets with decade-long relationships to He's publishers. He's talking about Kotaku. And like I'm what's, referring to yeah, large yeah, companies or corporations that produce in-house reviews for nearly every single major release on the market. And I'm referring to the corporations that span the entire world with franchised branches in multiple separate countries. That was important okay. because I don't want people mistaking my words for an attack on various independent creators who oftentimes publish incredible reviews that rightly deserve to be noticed. On that front, I being, think that this is wrong already. I do not think that uh, independent creators are immune to bias and to misrepresenting things. I think that in many cases, independent creators misrepresent things as much, if not more, than the uh, uh, these mainstream audiences do. Uh, in some cases. Now, obviously, there are certain types of... And it depends on the creator, by the way. He didn't say that. You're right. You're right. No, that's that's fair. You're right. He did not say that, but I think it was kind of implied. But, you know, let, let's go ahead and move past that. I'll, I'll just say that. I just wanted to make a comment here that I do not think independent creators are fundamentally uh, more objective. Reviews absolutely can be trusted because that review is largely based in reality, not curated fantasy, and also comes from a well-defined perspective. Basically, if you've gotten to know the personality of a reviewer over the span of months yeah. or even years, you are able to better understand why they say certain things and parse those opinions better than you could simple text on a web page, for example, from someone you probably know nothing about. In essence, the long-standing mm -hmm. format of pre-release reviews is impossible to trust ever. And today, I want to examine exactly why that is. To properly explain this, we need to look backward in time at two major projects that illustrate my point. Okay. The first example is Cyberpunk 2077. I've heard about and that For game. some people, that name might alone be enough to prove the argument, but yes. for those that don't remember quite so easily, let me elaborate. Cyberpunk 2077 notoriously was a botched release. The game had yes. severe problems on current generation consoles. True. And while I have absolute faith in CD Projekt Red to continue improving the title, which they have done substantially since that time, to be fair, the reality of launch day was eye-opening to say the very least. CD Projekt Red, regardless of where this decision originated from, decided to enforce an extremely strict embargo standard, which denied reviewers the ability to capture and show their own footage. For many people, this was- Isn't that interesting? Isn't that just an interesting little coincidence? Yeah, that's smart. That's smart that they do that actually so bad. Well, the thing is like, you've got to look at, um, basically this is what these companies do is that these companies will sometimes create a, like a situation where like they are effectively using reviewers because of the language in the contract as a marketing tool. And whenever you are reviewing a video game, you should not look at, like you should try to avoid being used as a marketing tool an immediate and severe red flag, rightly so. But going a little deeper, the embargo prevented reviewers from using anything other than pre-filmed B-roll footage. I, I wanna also draw a comparison that the embargo w for Elden Ring was just don't stream the, don't put the content out until it's out. That was it. Like, yeah, you can show whatever you want, just don't put it out before the day. That was it. That was the whole thing. Directly from the company. This created a very interesting and painfully obvious phenomenon See, where Project mainstream Rose, reviews yeah. were simply a visual extension of the company's marketing material. Like, for example, yes. like, I, I don't want to go back and forth and like pause this, but like, whenever I got the uh, early copy of Elden Ring, I didn't even sign an NDA. As far as I know, I didn't sign any NDA or anything. Like, they said, just don't, just don't show people the, the content. And they also, like, I just talked to them. And they're like, yeah, just don't show people the, the cinematics and stuff because, like, you know, we want people to see that on launch. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. All right, cool. I'll do that. And, and, like, it was fine. The way I do, like, this is so important, right? Is it, like, whenever you do business with people, and this especially matters whenever you're doing business with people that is not protected under the law, is that the second that anything goes, the second that anything in any degree is seems off or seems uh uh ab like ab abnormal it seems unnecessary it seems untrue or something like that did you get paid i did not get paid to play Elden ring um anything like that back the fuck out 
like the second that there is even a discrepancy it's like if you say fifty dollars and they say thirty dollars it's like okay i'm done nope uh uh nope i said 50 you know i said 50 no 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 games no games and like literally the second that anybody plays games to any degree got paid through twitch bounties uh no uh, i did not get paid i have made zero dollars commercially through elden ring uh I, I i the only money i made like you could say lost ark i made money because they had twitch drops and twitch drops increase your viewership but like other than that lost ark didn't pay me elden ring didn't pay me i uh yeah that, that's what it was i know it, it sounds crazy but i like the game non-disparagement clauses uh there were yeah 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 but that usually doesn't happen didn't you accidentally show opening cinematic they didn't tell me not to they showed me they said specific things not to show and um i, I just I, I didn't show those things I, I didn't i didn't think the opening cinematic was embargo because i explicitly asked there yeah, was I paid text lost or art. voiceover, yeah, whatever it was that in a few instances contradicted the perfectly polished outward appearance of the gameplay but the motivation here was uncharacteristically transparent of the course. premise was simple. Control as much of control the review the process narrative. as humanly possible yes. and control exactly what will be shown because the actual state of the game, had reviewers captured their own gameplay sessions, would have been far worse. This led to a pretty bizarre launch window where many people who purchased the game on console were completely baffled at its condition. What they were playing was not what had been seen. And since CD Projekt Red had not even allowed current generation console copies to be reviewed because they were so broken, no one had any idea how bad it was about to get. This would later become a rather unique moment of in course, game history. Of course, right? Yeah, it's misrepresenting things. They control the narrative too much. They even got sued for this. I think there was a whole shareholder thing. The game was pulled from the PlayStation Jesus. Store as well. That's probably the most notable oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Happened. And a refund I remember that. catastrophe that was bad. swept through half of the player base. But the focal point for today is how CD Projekt Red deliberately obfuscated and controlled the review process in a very restrictive way. Yeah. That's example number one. For example number two, we can look much more recently at Battlefield 2042. I heard that Battlefield 2042 was bad. Is that true? So would it be accurate to call it Battlefield 2042? Is that good? <laughs> Was, was that worth me pausing the game for? Pausing the whole video for? Battlefield 2042 pre-release was praised. Honestly, it was. But what people didn't know was that the game would become yet another example of botched quality with an yeah. unfinished product. There are more problems than I am qualified to even cover here. Just keep that in mind. Squad functions, map issues, basic features, all of it. And yet, on the game's homepage, EA was advertising for weeks, I might add, that the game had received a 90 out of 100 from COG Connected. Who the fuck is COG Connected? That sounds like a like a zone in Nomragon. The fuck does that even mean? Number one, who gives a shit? Number two, here's what I would do: is like if I like if a game gets really highly reviewed, this sounds crazy to me, but like I'm a crazy person, maybe I am. Um is if a game gets really highly reviewed, I actually assume it's bad. Like, I actually assume it's bad. I'm like, oh, it probably sucks. Like, in, in most cases, yeah, I just I assume it's bad or, or something like that, yeah. And, and it's like Lost Ark, Lost Ark, I don't know what Lost Ark got rated by, like, these uh, these companies, right? Conditioned, yeah. It's just, I, I've, I'm very distrustful of, of uh, any media. I, I think everybody's lying. A 4 out of 5 from Tech Radar. A 5 yeah. out of 5 from EGM, and a 4.5 out of 5 from Digital Trends. Wow. Also listed was a spattering of quotes, including one from IGN, as well as PC Gamer. Funnily enough, if you look at the actual context here behind the PC Gamer quote, it's It's just, a terrible game, but it's one of my favorites. Yeah, something like it's that. It's incredibly bad. The quote reads, One of my favorite games in the series on EA's website, right? Yeah. To advertise the game. But in the actual review, it says, quote, when everything works, Battlefield 2042 is easily one of my favorite games in the series. But it's Bro, that's honestly, like, I swear to God. Oh, my God. Like, did they have a guy from CNN write the website? Like, that is shameless, bro. Like, oh, my God. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of whenever Rich fucking spliced together all those clips of Shroud. And, like, it was crazy how many he needed to have just to have Shroud say Rich is good at video games, right? It took, like, 15. It was a lot. And so, yeah, this is some fucking... This is some, uh, some fake news. Oh, it gets better? Oh, of course it wasn't edited. What the fuck, Rich? Yeah, oh, true, dude, true rare to make it through a match without feeling like something has rattled loose from deep inside the game engine and no amount of portal inducing nostalgia can mask the feeling 
that this game feels rushed out the door. And and they took it's my one of my is when it oh my god, how is it? How can you do that? That's so oh wow! Like how is this not like to some degree like against the law or something? Like it's just it's like is how is this legal? Yeah, this is like false advertising. What the fuck? Like, companies always do this? Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? Is, like, every once in a while, not every once in a while, um, all the time, people will write articles about me. And I read these articles, and it's like, Asmongold fucking, you know what? Let's find some. Right now, let, let's find some, and uh, let's go ahead, Asmongold, past week. So let's look at some of the, uh, the, the news stories written about me. And you'll look at some of the titles for these things, and they're just so insane. Wow, devs must take must look look, look at what what this look, look at these art must take time on the uh, uh, on the next expansion risk final franchise flop. Yeah, we've been saying that for ten years. Like, what do you mean? Uh, what's some more of these? Switch series says loot boxes should be illegal. Okay, that's actually pretty fair. Um, like. Every single time, Asmongold says, oh, this is some fucking, oh my god, oh my god, look at this one, says, New World will get better with future updates. What's New World's in quotes? Oh, it's actually not quotes, but still. Yeah, and like, these articles get written about me, and it's like, some of them, I didn't really say this exactly, or there's like a... There's, there's a little bit of editorializing, let's just say that. A little bit of editorializing. That's a very distinctive difference, and it highlights exactly Sample? why mainstream yeah, reviews yeah. fundamentally cannot be trusted. Those actually aren't really even good when examples. Some of them Those are, are actually right. pretty fair. After working in this industry for roughly six years myself yeah. and making connections at numerous different publications, dev studios, mm -hmm. publishers, all of it, here is my understanding of how all of this works. Gaming news media is very obviously a for-profit industry. Nobody's going to dispute That's that. True. Also, I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. It's just it's reality. That's true. Profit comes from advertisers. And That's advertisers true. pay based on clicks. Yes. Writing things that bring in page views and thus potentially clicks is the foundation of a successful business in the space. And thus, true. having content that can capture those views reliably is critical. There's a and that's why you have all these videos that get made that are fucking stupid. And, and like these articles written, it's like uh, 10 things that white people are bad at, you know, and you have an article written by some person and it's like everybody cooks on this article because it's like, oh my God, this is just going to, it's going to piss everybody off. Right. And they're like, no, really, you see these kind of rage bait. Yeah. And, and like, they just make money off of the ad. It's to get attention. Yeah. Sort of long-standing myth out there that mainstream reviewers, particularly sites like IGN or Kotaku, whatever it is, outlets in general that cover video games, get paid for higher scores. This myth is predicated on the- Bro, like, why are they just standing there? General that cover video- Like, this is like an execution? Like, look at them, they're just standing- Get paid- they Just wait for him to hit him. For higher scores. This myth is predicated on the idea that actual money is changing hands, which is, quite honestly, a little bit absurd. The reality is much more indirect, mm -hmm. but if you really drill down to the core issue, yes, they are being paid a lot of money to stay on the publisher's good side, Yes. If that means giving the game a higher score, well, it's happened before and it will happen again. Yeah. Here's how it works. Unnamed publisher has a big new game coming out, which is probably going to sell millions of copies and have millions of players. Yes. Unnamed media company knows this and wants to make money on that game. Well, they also want to like they want to have access. Like a lot of this is for access. Like you see this in my opinion, I think this happens with uh wild WoW streamers. It's like I think wild WoW streamers are sometimes like too apologetic for blizzard because they don't want to lose connections that they have at the company like that's kind of like that's it's like access yeah there you go it's access media because like they don't want to they, they don't want to rock the boat they're not trying to do anything different because they want to keep the gravy train rolling they want their gravy that called out bro there it is it, it is it is what it is i'll be right back i right, take a piss if somebody thinks I moved into a mansion and it's a green screen, honestly, dude, if I ever move somewhere else, I would probably just stream in a big open room. Like, I'd just stream in the living room. Like, I thought about moving my setup downstairs and just streaming in the living room now, but I was like, I, I mean, I've always streamed up here. I'm going to just keep doing that. Let's go. You Did you wash your hands? Oh, no, 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 I didn't. Uh, I didn't wash my hands. I got a clean dick, so I don't have to.
The only way they can guarantee that they will make a lot of money is if they get their review out before the game is even for sale. Yeah. Thus maximizing traffic because of yep. exclusivity. This requires... The same that fucking shit happens with WoW videos. They happen all the time. Is that content creators would upload shit so early even though it was wrong because they cared more about getting their review out there and having it like everybody see the review rather than uh, actually making good content. Like how many times have you seen like guides for videos and they're super fucking incomplete. And I will tell you something, it is a bad strategy because I wanna show you why. Look at this, my video for New World released over a month after the game came out, two million views. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this shit. Like, you can still make good content, and this review was right. You're an exception. Yeah, you don't want to know why it's an exception? Because it was good. It was a good fucking video. You already have an established audience? Oh, what, and Kotaku doesn't? What, 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 are, you, what are you saying? Them to be in good standing with the publisher. Problem number one. But it gets worse. Yeah. Pre-release reviews, unless the reviewer is given a full copy of the game with a lengthy period of time before it comes out, and the game doesn't change in that mm -hmm. window, but that's a whole separate thing, are often based on a curated vertical slice of content, yes. which the publisher controls with absolute precision. This is exactly what happened with Diablo 3, is that everybody thought Diablo 3 was going to be amazing because they played Act 1. Act 1 and Diablo 3 was amazing. It was extremely well balanced and everything about it was generally good. The problems happened whenever you went into the fucking desert and you got hit by the invisible fucking wasps. Because as soon as you got out of that content, then you got the bad content. Because you're right, yeah, they're going to show you the content that looks good. And that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Cyberpunk 2077, for example, just didn't ship the console copies of the game that were the most broken. Presto Changeo, a game that would Smart. have had horrible feedback from a large chunk of players yep. all over the different forums, becomes a game that sells perfectly fine at launch because Absolutely. knowing even they don't even know it's broken. For other games, and they I might think in that regard, it's probably not the uh, it, it's it's not the reviewer's fault. Because there is a certain degree where, like, the publisher is intentionally misinterpreting or misrepresenting what the game is. Like, I'm not going to completely shit on reviewers. Because you can say you cannot trust mainstream game reviews. That might be true, but that's sometimes not even because of the person doing the review. It's because this person got a false pretense of the game because that's what was given to them. But that's why you can't trust them. Yeah, I, I, I think we're talking about fault versus responsibility. You know, it, yeah, yeah, misrepresenting versus lying. Well, it, it's, it, no, I think, it, it, like, doing it intentionally is very important in my mind. To intentionally skimp out on things and to intentionally misrepresent things, I think is totally different than to be given a different perspective and to be, to be misled. That is totally different in my mind even run a completely separate build or have a tiny little slice of time where they can play. Yeah. Setting aside the fact that server traffic in a multiplayer game is one of the most unpredictable and chaotic things, period. True. These review events and review copies are fundamentally made so that the game looks and runs as good as possible. Absolutely. They have a smaller player size, plenty of resources, and the entire thing is built so that the game will get high scores. At a glance, Cyberpunk 2077 yes. might have had some problems, but it was probably safe to purchase at launch, right? For console players, wrong. A great many of them were looking at mainstream reviews and treating that as an indication of the experience they might have. When in reality- Which is not their fault. They should do that. Like the, the players are not at fault here. I think this is a completely reasonable expectation to have. Mainstream reviews are typically done on expensive, high powered machines with mm -hmm. special builds of the game and a yeah. lower concurrent player count, especially. Worse yet, they might've even been done on a custom build that is being run by the developers in real time. I once participated in a remote gameplay session just like that for a few hours on an unreleased game and it ran so much better than the actual launch day version. It was, I, I was baffled, but that is because the entire pre-launch format is geared towards deception. I wouldn't go so far as to say that Battlefield 2042 was perfect for the reviewers or even deserving of a five out of five or a 90 out of a hundred, but I would be willing to guess that it didn't have nearly as many problems for them.
No, this it was means probably that the review like they produced isn't accurate. The, the majority of them probably just played the game. Like most reviewers, you've got to remember that like a lot of these people reviewing games review a game like every they probably review more than one game a week. So whenever they're actually reviewing these games, they're not giving it a like a, a really solid look through. These are casuals. It's the same thing I said with New World, right? Every single New World review, all of the screenshots were in the starting areas. There were no screenshots of people that were at level 60 in the alpha or the beta. No, they were all like fucking level, level 20 or level 17 having a blast. So does YouTubers? Yeah, absolutely. You're right about that. The player experience, maybe it's slightly accurate to their experience, but not player experience for sure. And they got paid in the form of enormous traffic to their website, right? That is being paid indirectly while basing True. the entire thing off of a product that they really can't even verify is accurate. Of course, there are always exceptions to this, right? That happens no matter what. You make a claim, there's exceptions. Something like Elden Ring can be held up as an example of extreme product accuracy, in my opinion, but not yeah, all games so. are like Elden Ring. In that instance, the game was finished, and I'm assuming just to prevent spoilers, that seems like the most logical decision they made, they had an embargo, at least yeah, I think they did, they on did. what areas of the world could be shown in the pre-release review. This was not an embargo to change yeah. the reception of the game itself, because that wasn't necessary. It was fully completed and was fine. Don't so However, when there is an embargo yeah. on what can be shown, or what versions are being played, or how long the reviewer was even allowed to play them, you immediately cannot trust anything they say. I'm not saying this because you can't trust the person themselves who writes or creates the review, though at times perhaps that's also true. I'm saying this because the publisher's marketing department is part of the equation, and everything you see may well have been curated, sculpted, and modified to present the best outward appearance possible. Which is not necessarily the fault of the reviewer, because they don't have a frame of reference to judge whether something is accurate or not to the experience that you're going to have on launch. Uh, I think that's to a certain degree on the publisher. In my opinion, what would I do is that I would, if you're worried about buying a game and you're unsure if it's going to be good or not, do not buy it on release. Like, the way that I check if a game is good is I watch videos and streams of the game, I see the gameplay, and if the gameplay is good, I play the game. Like, do not ever go and, you know, read a review on some popular website that says a game is good, buy it on day one. They literally just said that? I mean, I don't know if he really said that or not, but, like, that's what I was thinking. If the reviewer then gushes over that appearance with praise and compliments, but the game ultimately launches in a much worse condition, yeah. it's because the entire process, at the most basic level, is untrustworthy. The yeah. best example of this really is Battlefield 2042, most recently. Multiplayer game with yeah, severe cool. issues, but reviewers give it, by and large, pretty excellent scores. When it finally yeah. launches, players are completely blindsided because they are playing something that has not been crafted specifically to impress a few people. <laughs> the menu, the menu's so fucked up. Uh, I, I think also um, uh, another factor is like, for example, like lag. It, for example, like New World was really, really bad because it had a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of like queues. Like Lost Ark had the same issue, is that there were a lot of queues in the game. You, you couldn't log in and play the game. That's not something that a reviewer is even going to encounter. But if you're, oh, it's part of the game? Okay, I thought it was a bug. Um, but yeah, it, like, and I absolutely think that if like you have to wait in a queue to play a video game for more than an hour, that absolutely is going to be, that absolutely is a tangible reason why the game is worse. Like, I, I don't care, like, oh, I didn't know. Uh-uh, don't care. Uh, if you have to spend over an hour waiting to play this game just because of a queue system, that is something that makes the game worse. Just like Classic, just like Classic. That was a stupid decision for them, and they should have made more servers or more layers. And they didn't do it because they wanted to maintain the way the game was supposed to be. Absolutely. Endwalker queue? Yes, the Endwalker queue was also abysmal. It was really bad. People. And EA even cherry picks the least authentic quotes imaginable and plasters them across That's its unbelievable. website, perpetuating the false impressions that wow. they helped create in the first place to sell more copies. We live in a sort of awkward time right now because antiquated systems of exclusivity and access still persist, but the internet has opened all the doors wide for anyone to participate and add to the conversation. Larger publications cling to their early access desperately because it guarantees a certain amount of revenue and publishers allow them to maintain it 
because they can harvest additional sales, maybe, sometimes. And it's easier to have a formal relationship with something like a, a company versus an individual because individuals are more harder to predict. They're more volatile and, you know, things can happen. They're in a lot of different ways. So I, I think that's why they do it. And it's also like it's a longstanding relationship. And it's just unfortunate that these things happen, but it happens everywhere. It's the same as like certain uh, political magazines or political uh, like uh, stations, whatever you want to call them like they're going to have better relationships with certain politicians because the, the always the issue is this people are people and people are not going to be objective they're not going to be rational in all regards they're going to do what they're going they're going to have biases they're going to have uh you know preferences they're going to have people that they are spending more time with and so that people are people that's true listen guys hey can we get a true in chat for that listen and, and you can never get that out of there and it, it's it's not that like the individual reviewer is more authentic than the large company it's just that in some cases the large company can have more corruption endemically invested into it like ingrained into it control their image most importantly but if they simply posted what they had truthfully and publicly the natural spread of information online would likely carry it just as far with much better reception yes obviously not the most predictable way to maximize profit especially if you know your product is bad but hey that seems to be why the system persists in this form anyway so i guess in a way it is useful for them bottom line mainstream reviews especially pre-release versions can never be trusted the entire point of them based on the existing format at least is to deceive you and sometimes yes they are accurate but when something is well here's a very easy way to understand this is that many regards of these people and their interactions with these companies do you know who they talk to from the company the marketing department they talk to the marketing department they're not talking to the authenticity department they're not talking to the developers they're targeting they're talking to the marketing development so what a surprise that those people the pr yes this, yeah, there's not the truth department they're doing it in a way to represent the game in the best way possible. And it makes sense. Uh, of course, yeah, it, it makes sense. But at the same time, it can be deceiving. And the devs get rolled in the end? Yeah, they do. Well, it's it's not that it's not the devs' fault. The devs still are making a shit game in some cases. And, and I want to say that somebody keeps re repeating this over and over and over. YouTube critics rely on early copies from publishers too. They're just as fake. Um... <laughs> I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. And I think that nobody should take like, I, and I, I really hate this idea. And this is always like one of these, like it's a very popular internet meme, right? It's, it's as old as the, uh, you know, David and Goliath, right? Where, you know, you're going to root for the little guy and, you know, it's the little guy. Let's get behind oh, YouTube, you know, independent creators are the little guy, right? Uh, they're the, they're the ones that are trying to do it right. The fact is that uh, people can be corrupt, small and large, and you shouldn't trust, you know what, this is what I would say, you cannot trust game reviews. Like, you just remove mainstream game reviews, just you cannot trust game reviews, period. That's it. It's deliberately made to control exactly what you see and then what you think as a result of what you see, like early access builds or pre-launch windows or whatever it is. Yeah. How can you then trust a review of that product, which oftentimes isn't the same product you yourself are going to be playing? The yeah. answer is you can't. You're True. much better off watching an independent creator three weeks after launch. But that's that, yes. If you want to support, there, there are links go. down below, primarily Locals and Patreon, to not rely on YouTube AdSense. There's Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative. My entire content library is over there as well, completely free. Another YouTuber to check out, merchandise, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. And have a nice night. I like this guy's videos a lot. Uh, it's Upper Echelon Gamers. I, I I didn't recognize his voice until I saw the name. He made a lot of videos about New World. So this guy, <laughs> this guy's been through the ringer. So you you understand how it is.